G'day and welcome to A Down Under Yarn. Today is Monday the 22nd of July 2013. For some reason I felt like saying February then and I've got no idea why. Um, probably because I'm overtired after a massive, massive weekend. I am back from Bendigo. Bendigo hosts the Australian Sheep and Wool Festival every July for three days. Um, today I think is the ram sale but I am home. Um, welcome. This is episode, I think it's actually episode 30. It's either 29 or 30, so it will be in the title. Um, and for the third week in a row, I'm not using my notebook because it would have been too difficult to write everything in there today. But I will try and put up some detailed show notes um, because I'm going to be showing you a lot of stuff. This is probably not your normal episode, it's a bit of a Bendigo recap. Uh, for those not in Australia, Bendigo is probably the closest we have to a Rhinebeck, from what I can gather, in that it is a festival for the wool industry and it involves a lot of um, indie dyers and not so indie as well, some, some LYA, uh, locally owned shops are there. Um, and they come along and are able to sell their things. I could I looked at Shearer's combs. I looked at some of the sheep they had there. They were mainly, if you want to pole merinos or a few Polworth there, a um, few Corridale. But as I found from found out from one of the farmers, they prefer the merinos because the fleece grows quicker, which is something I didn't know before. Um, yeah, and one of the farmers wanted to buy one of the rams that was there. He was. If you want a cliche of an Australian farmer, he was probably it. He wasn't wearing the dryser bone, but he had the moleskins on. He had the plaid shirt with the jacket over the top, with the leather um, um, leather elbow patches, the tweedish jacket, leather, leather elbow patches. Hey, and I'm sure when he went outside, he put his hat on. And he was probably about my age. But still. Anyway, that, hey, so be it. So, very briefly, the week that was. Um, I heard from Imogen on Wednesday or Thursday. I, no, Ken Show. I haven't mentioned Ken Show. Um, Ken Show on Thursday. No, Wednesday. Wednesday at Ken Show. I was there and I ran into Imogen's friend who's been in Japan with her, his mum. And I said, next Monday they're coming home. And she goes, oh no, he's not coming home till Wednesday. They've changed their flights. And I said, oh, I haven't heard that from Imogen. Um, so I contacted her that evening and said, um, when are you coming home? And she said, next Wednesday. And I said, when were you going to tell me? I thought I had. Apparently someone's organised a camp. So they're going on a camp for two nights, which is nice. So they get to say goodbye to their friends and get to spend time with them, which is great. So it means she's not home this morning like I thought. She's home on Wednesday, but still. Uh, Ken show. I entered eight things and... I entered most of them just for show, for display. Um, I was absolutely shocked that I got a first for my Rockefeller um, shawl. I got a second for my Ho'oloha um, in the garment class. And the one that got first was a Fair Isle vest, which was absolutely amazing. Um, and then in the dyeing, I got a second. Now, but I learnt so much as well. I've never been in the show before. I've never shown anything. Um, even though it wasn't a requirement with the dyeing, the people that got first and third actually knitted up swatches. Um, you had to say how you dyed your product. I've got two cats here that are a bit clingy at the moment, as clingy as my cats will be where they don't sit on your knee or anything. Anyway, um, you have to describe what you did and I just did it very basically, hand painted, um, professional grade acid dyes over, and overwashed. Um, <laughs> over -dyed, and they went into great detail about temperatures used and everything. Plus they had the knitter's swatch, so I know next time that, hey, that's something that I might consider. Um, I heard so many lovely things from people as well when they were talking about um, my gear, which is quite nice. Um, people who have contacted me and said, oh my God, I saw your shawl, it's amazing. So yeah, um, Really, really pleased just to have been able to be there. I sat Thursday, Wednesday afternoon and spun. Um, 
actually don't have that spinning in here. I don't think it's outside and I, I, I probably won't show it this week. I'll show it next week because I do have a lot of stash enhancement. Um, Thursday, again, I was at the show helping another organisation in the morning and then trying to get ready for Bendigo. Now, the plan was I had dyed up some stuff and I was going to put it into mini skeins. You right there, boys? Skein into mini skeins, have my business cards with it, and that would go out. Now, I didn't have time to have the business cards printed, so I bought some Avery business cards. And that came with some software that said you design it. So I did that, pressed print, and it was all over the place. So I thought I must have chosen the wrong side card, so I did it again, and no, again. I, I did all the stuff I was meant to do, and in the end I thought I'll print it out, I've got some cardstock here. Cardstock has to go through a special feeder in my printer, it was taking five minutes per card. In the end I just said no, enough's enough. So to those people who can't print Bendigo, I am sorry I didn't have samples, but please if you contact me, I will send you some later in the week. Bit of a, an update, after this I am getting my final bits of paperwork together. I'm hoping I will start a course so the next week or this week, I don't know. Um, and that goes for three weeks, then I think I'm allowed to start trading. It, it's all because I'm getting the funding. I have to be very careful. Um, whilst I would love to be up trading now, although the weather hasn't been the best for dying here, um, I do have to wait. So that's that. Um, Thursday evening, I flew down to Melbourne via Sydney. I didn't get in until I think 11.30. I stayed at a hotel right near the airport. It was really basic, but it, I, it was for all I needed. It was great just for overnight. Woke up bright and early. Couldn't get my hire car until about 10-ish um, because I wasn't returning it until 10. I didn't want to pay for an extra day. So I got that. Went down and picked up the amazing Kiki from Yarn vs Zombies. Met her. and We went and had some breakfast and then drove out to Bendigo. Our first stop was in the centre of town. There was a pop-up shop where there was gin and tonic yarns and I can't remember her name. She's feisty wench on Ravelry. Sorry. Um, but they had a pop-up shop there. Then, which was lovely, just above a gallery in town and the gallery itself had lots of nice things in it. Um, oh, then we went to the woolen mills. I never, no, I remember going to the woolen mills on school camp when I was probably in grade five or grade six. Um, and I remember going on a tour of them and I remember going into the shop, but I mean, the wool meant nothing to me. Um, so didn't actually get anything at the time, I don't think. I possibly did because I used to do stuff like that. Um, went into the amazing back room, which was where I met the first person who had to say hello, hello, um, which was very exciting and it was, yeah, it was, it, I'm just me and to have people coming up to me throughout the weekend saying, oh my gosh, I watch your podcast. It's, it's quite, quite strange, um, but lovely at the same time and people who said they thought they fangirled and I'm thinking, what, what why? Um, so yeah, so really lovely to meet so many people. Um, Woolen Mills, I was, I was totally overwhelmed in the back room. Apparently there was much more there that I could have spotted, but it was pretty overwhelming. Um, plus there were lots and lots of people there. So from the Woolen Mills, we went out to the Fiber Master that you give me the knits and nanny... Nanny's spin on things was they were hosting that out there and that was amazing. We sat down and knit for the afternoon basically after that. I'd forgotten to have lunch. I met up with one of the ladies I was staying with. Um, I met her at the, actually at the mill and then we met up again there and we headed out. I dropped um, Kiki off at the station and then but she was heading back to Melbourne overnight. And then we headed out to where we were staying on Lake Eberlock. It was just beautiful. It was about half an hour out of town, right on Lake Eberlock, 
in the morning there were kangaroos everywhere. In driving out there, there were kangaroos. We had to avoid them a couple of times. Um, but yeah, oh, and the birds that were out there, it was freezing. It was lovely. Well, not, when I say freezing, it's probably what people in the US would call spring. Um, but it was just beautiful and just lovely being amongst like-minded people. There were six or seven of us staying out there and we just laughed and we had a couple of drinks and we sat and knitted and shared ideas for patterns and looked at each other's hauls and oh, just an amazing couple of nights I had out there. Um, needless to say, Friday night, I think we were up till after two and I didn't set an alarm for Saturday morning, didn't wake up till nine o'clock um, and that's when everyone else was sort of stumbling out of bed. So after I you know, had a couple of coffees, I didn't get to the sheep and wool show till about 11ish. I wandered around in a daze to begin with. Then I knew I was picking up my wheel. So I thought, no, I'll go and pick up my wheel now. So I did that. Um, I'd been to the bank and thought I'd gotten out my budget, then realised that I was, I'd been a bit unrealistic with my budget. Um, and being my first fibre festival, and also I've never actually been to a local yarn store because we don't have them up here. So it was totally overwhelming at times. One of the ladies I was staying with said the first time she went there, she ended up basically in the fetal position, sobbing because in the afternoon because there was just so much to look at. I picked up my wheel, went and had a look around a couple of things, went to um, Woody's, who does the this wood turner. Um, I didn't have enough cash to buy what I wanted, so he puts things away and said there was an ATM across, there was an ATM at the showgrounds, but it had broken down. I think everyone had withdrawn all the money. So I went down to the muster. I was heading down there anyway for our meetup. Uh, that was a really good place to have a meetup. And the people that said there, because it was wet as well, it was um, showery throughout the day, probably not a good place to have a meetup at the actual showgrounds. If it had been fine, I think, yeah, that would have been okay. But the muster was a fantastic place to meet up. And it, it was a really, really lovely atmosphere there. Um, of course, Kiki was there, met up with a few other people. Then I went back to the showground, drove Kiki back to the showgrounds and her friend. I'm sorry, I can't remember her friend's name. Um, because I had to get my woodwork stuff and I wanted to get some other stuff. And I hadn't been there to see the sheep, so I wanted to do that. Um, and then I bumped into the people I was staying with and they were about ready to go. So I said, yeah, I think, yes, there's, there's places I haven't been, but I'm out of money. My bag's full. I, it also gives me an excuse to come back next year because there were places I didn't get to go. <sighs> so we went back Saturday night, um, one of the people there cooked tacos for dinner and they were just absolutely amazing. Made with corn for tears. And, oh, just, just gorgeous. And again, set up. I may have had a few Baileys. <laughs> may have had, oh, I tried some mango wine that I took out. Oh my gosh, it was gross. There is a photo floating around of me and my reaction to the mango wine. Um, if you've seen that, yeah. <sighs> then yesterday morning I was up for everyone else and I actually left before they woke up, which I knew was probably going to happen. I had to be on the road by eight to get back to the airport. I actually had a clear run through. Um, I was there by sort of 9.30, but then I had to fill the hire car with fuel before dropping it. I had to drop it off by 10. My flight home, I came again via Sydney. Thanks boys, um, again via Sydney, so Plane to Sydney was fine, um, not a problem. Get to Sydney, I had about an hour in Sydney. So, Max, Max, come on, Max, come on. He's okay, he's just been silly. Um, had about an hour in Sydney, so I was able to sit in the lounge there, which was just fantastic. Um, and then went. It went to get in the plane. We were about five minutes late boarding, 
we boarded, they went through the um, safety demonstration, we backed out, turned, and we went forward a little bit, and then the plane stopped, and was just sitting there. And the pilot comes on, and he says, oh, just the pilot again. We've got, a, we've got something here that just doesn't look right. We're just going to pull back into the bay and have the engineers look at it, and um, I'll keep you informed. So he comes back about five minutes later, and he says, look, I think we've found the issue. I'll keep you updated. Ten minutes later, he says, you can turn on your phones. I'll let you turn on your phones, um, and if you need to, I've turned off the seatbelt sign. If you need to get up and go to the bathroom, that's fine. About 10 minutes later, he gets on and he says, look, we found the problem. Everything's going to be okay. Um, we've just got the paperwork to do. That'll take about 10 minutes. So I'm thinking, cool, easy peasy, not a problem. Then, um, then after about 15 minutes, and people are getting fidgety and things, he said, it comes on and goes, ladies and gentlemen, I wish I had better news, but the issue is more... Um, involved than what we originally thought and we're going to change planes because I'm not prepared to fly this plane um, which hey when you fly Qantas they have a track record on safety and this is one of the reasons so he said we are going to be moving to the bay next door we're getting that plane um, but that plane has to be it has to be finished um, cleaning all the food has to be transferred over all your luggage has to be transferred over it'll take 15 20 minutes um, in the meantime, if you present your boarding pass at any food outlet, you'll get $20 worth of food. So, got off the plane, went and grabbed some sushi, which was nice, went back and waited. In the end, we were probably, probably about an hour and a bit late in leaving. And then we got headwinds all the way home. So, it meant we were almost two hours late in landing. But still, it was, it's fine. I got home. Um, Jasper was pleased to see me, my mum was pleased to see me, Cats was sort of pleased to see me, um, Ninja was Ninja, and yeah, um, we got some pizza on the way home last night, and I ended up falling into bed about 10 o'clock, I was just exhausted. So, um, I'll do a, bit, a brief amount, brief show and tell on my knitting, um, I, I'm not going to show my acquisitions from the last week. I'm going to put them in next week. I'm actually going to make a note about that. Um, and some other stuff that I have coming up with that as well. Very briefly in Australia, don't forget the Spin Magazine, the competition for the Ply Magazine, sorry. Um, the stuff's all in there, so just go and have a look. My Camp Loopy 2 project is my Ishbel. And... This is, ah, uh, look, I'm just going to show you progress because I've left the tags outside. I've just finished the stock in it and I'm about to start the lace. I took this with me. I needed this on the plane on the way down um, and finished off the stock in it bit. I'm actually glad that the plane diverted because I, well, we were waiting. I finished off the stock in it and I wanted to get down, but I was in that three and I was against the window. And my knitting was under the seat in front of me, so I was trying to um, pull it out. And, yeah. Anyway. Um, so I was able to then swap over going uh, before the second, second take two of the flight. So that is my Camp Loopy 2. I have these 350 gram balls. I can't even remember what it is. I'm sorry. I know the colour is cherry pie, I think. Um... That's the amount I've got left in the first one. Yeah, so I've got quite a bit of lace ahead of me. <coughs> Pardon me. But I do have time to finish it. Um, I've also taken to stealing the little spoons on the plane because they're a really, really good size for scooping out powdered dyes onto my scales. That's, yeah. So if anyone's flying Qantas and wants to collect some for me, it's fine honestly so that is the first project that I have been working on the second project is I will show this though my girl cave bag arrived last week you can see the button down there in my elephants which I just love and it's been to Bendigo with me so love 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 it I, so I was wearing a spoon, took it off. 
<laughs> for some silly reason. Look what I've got. I've got my Ravelry badge. And then I grabbed another badge. This is another acquisition. There we are. Which is a wee bit. There you go. You can read that. Um, Friday night. I mean, a few drinks may have been consumed, but still. Um, <laughs> I cast on my second of my Rock Strata mints. And I'm up to section top. Section 3, section 4. I can't remember what it's called. I decided to reverse the colours. I have the first mint here. And I probably could have finished these if I wanted to, but to be honest, DPNs I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of, but they are needed in this um, with this recipe, this pattern. I understand why, um, and that's fine. And I just didn't want it nicked with DPNs on the plane. There was no way I wanted to pull them out. I thought I'd drop one, and it would be a bit of a nightmare. Um, so they'll probably be finished at some stage today. The other project that I've been working on is something I cast on at Bendigo. I took this down especially to cast on and that is just some stripy socks using some yarn versus zombies yarn this is yarn that kiki died up especially for me it is the watermelon colorway and i really love how it's knitting up um haven't done a lot because i actually slept most of the flight from sydney yesterday um these are going to be for imogen so i have cast i think i cast on 14 at the bottom judy's magic cast on and i increased up to 64 stitches these are US 1.5 2.5 millimeter needles. I got these at the muster from You Give Me the Knits. They are the Chow Goos with the bend, and I love them. I must say, these are the most amazing sock needles I've ever tried. So, if you can find the ones with the bend, I like them because of the way I knit. Um, and I find that with straight needles, I'm pushing against the cable. With these, there's the bend there. It's superb. They float onto the needle, they slide off, they slide, slide, they slide on, they slide off. Absolutely amazing. So that is my yarn versus zombies yarn there. That is the knitting content. Now we go on to the acquisitions. Now, I'm not totally sure how I should do this. This is all Bendigo stash and Bendigo enhancements. Um, I might start off, excuse me, this is my red bubble shirt by the way, um, anyway, so I might start off, I'm just going to, excuse me, just that, okay, so I might start off with the pop-up shop because that's the first place we went, I only bought one skein of yarn there, I wasn't going to buy any, I looked at the fibre, I looked at the yarn, I was, actually didn't think I was going to buy any yarn for the whole festival, but I've come away with three, but there's a reason behind each of them. So the first yarn is from Gin and Tonic Yarns. I may have got it because of the name of the company. I'm not sure. There is the card. Hand spun, hand dyed, yarns and fibres. Um, this is 100% certified organic merino. It is the colourway is Lump. It is a light fingering and it's 450 metres. So I think it will probably end up being a shawl. It's very much my mother's colours. Um, so I'm thinking I might use this in a shawl for her. I did think about doing socks, but they've just looked at and seen as 100% merino. It's definitely not going to become socks, um, being 100%. Even though it does seem to have... It, it's very nice. It's very, very nice. Very, very nice. So I really love the colours in that. Um, and then we went to the Bendigo Woolen Mills. And in the back room, I scored a couple of bargains. The first one is 8-ply, 67% alpaca, 67% wool, 33% alpaca. Um, I got 10-50-gram 10 ball, 10 gram balls of this. And I don't know, you can see the rustle there. That's actually not too bad. It's got a purple and green sort of flecky through it. So I'm assuming that the grey is the wool and the purple and green is perhaps the alpaca. I'm not sure. Um, I'm probably going to the best out of this and possibly for Mimmel. Um, because it, it is nice. It is a nice shaded grey. So the second thing I got there was this. Which is, excuse me, um, pure, it's sliver. And it is pure wool, alpaca, vicose, kemp, bamboo, and Bermuda. And it's called Harvest, but it's just because it's a big bag. So the light's reflecting on it. But there you go. 
its huge bag of fibre, which I am going to dye. So I'm not putting fibre in the shop to begin with. Uh, that will come after a couple of months. Um, but this gives me something that was fairly cheap, and I was then able to, I would then be able to try some of that out. Um, the muster. The muster is held at the North Bendigo Bowls Club, and it is a, a venue where they have some demonstrations there throughout the day, some sort of mini classes, if you if you like. Um, they had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think perhaps nine or ten vendors in there, um, including You Give Me the Knits and, of course, Nanny's Spin on Things. <sighs> That's where I started falling down. Um, I went to Nanny's booth and she had her blending board there that she was showing everyone how it works and it was just amazing and one day I definitely want to get one because just to see how she did it. <sighs> okay, so we have the most amazing from Nanny's Burnished Bats. It's a mixed fibre bat containing a selection from the following fibres, uh, woolen fleece and top ranging from Corridale, BFL, Finn, English Leicester, Merino, Mohair, Silk Hankies, Noil, top, milk, soy, bamboo, tinsel and sparkle. This one has wool, mohair, silk, milk, bamboo, tinsel and angelina. Now, I'm hoping you can see that there. That's the back of it. Three, not as nice as the front. But it is all jewel colours and I'm not going to use this now. Um, I'm going to wait, but it will probably become some sort of art yarn because it does have bits through there. It's just, just so beautiful. I mean, can you see there, really don't want to take it out of the plastic, but the yellowy bits there that are just blended through. And I could have bought five or six of those because they are just amazing. I will be linking these shops in the show notes if you would like to go there and have a look. Because, yeah, pretty amazing. Then... I went to You Give Me The Knits and they're hiding back here and I got this. Look at that. It's licorice all sorts. Isn't that just beautiful? It's Merino Bamboo Top. 100 grams. Again, I don't really want to get it out of the plastic. So that was that. Then I went back on Saturday after Shah, who I was staying with, um, had this and I had to get one too. And this is Unicorn Farts, which is Merino Silk and Milk. And it's just bright and fun and funky and just gorgeous. Um, then there was a lady there from an alpaca farm who had Suri Silk. And this would have to be the softest, most beautiful yarn. So it's natural luxury and quality, natural colour knitting yarn, 90% pure Surrey alpaca, 10% silk, sustainable product from Strathbogie, um, Australian grown and made. I got this, I thought I might dye it, I'm now not sure if I'm going to dye it, it's definitely going to be a cow. Um, that's got a lot of glare coming off it, but oh my gosh, it is just beautiful. And the lady there was just gorgeous. Had a long chat with her about alpacas and alpaca farming. Um, yeah. So, wow. Really pleased I got that. Then to Bendigo itself, the Sheep and Wool Festival on the Saturday. Um, where, where do I start? Probably with the fibre because that's easier. Just walking through one of the pavilions. Um, I don't think it's any secret. Polworth would be my favourite fibre at the moment. I just love it. I find it really, really lovely to spin. And someone was selling these hand-dyed Polworth tops from their own Polworth. Um, and I picked up this bag here. And it's sort of, it sort of reminds me of rhubarb colours, actually. It's a nice sort of reddy, pinky red with that beautiful olive green. So really pleased I got that one. Again, around 100 grams, I think. 
doesn't actually say, but yeah, 100 grams for $10. Died. You can't complain. Um, I went to Ish Ishbel, Ix Ixshul Bunny, Ixshul Angora Rabbit Stud. I got some magic bunny top. There we go. This is Magic Bunny Top, which is 17 micron merino, 60%, Angora 5%, cashmere 10%, and 25% glitz. And it is, again, super soft. I think it was here, though, I was just standing at the table looking around, and I was just patting the fibre, like stroking it, and someone came up and she goes, I do that! I hadn't even noticed I was doing it, so, yeah. Um, so that's my Magic Bunny Top. Something I probably won't spin straight off, but won't happen straight away, but it will happen, put it that way. Then I went to Mosley Park, which had a huge display. And again, could have gone pretty crazy there. Lots of people were. It was the place I queued up the longest to, to buy my stuff. Um, lots of ideas on how they displayed things, which was really interesting as well. And I got some Superwash BFL top, 150 grams. Yeah. That's a pretty accurate colorway so yeah and again from Mosley Park um, then I went and found the Zigo Zago which is a local yarn store in Castlemaine which is near Bendigo um, I knew the people I was staying with, my friends were going there first thing in the morning and I thought I'll give them time to clear it out. I met up with some people on Friday, who one of whom had bought three sweaters worth, one of whom bought two sweaters worth and I thought they won't have much left because they had Madeline Tosh. And I have a bit of Tosh Merino light myself but I hadn't seen a lot in the flesh so to speak um, and I wanted to have a look at some of the colours. I knew I wanted some Madeline Tosh tart and vintage to make it hat. And I wasn't going to buy any commercial yarn on my trip. But then I thought, you know, if they've got Tosh Vintage in Tart, I'll get it. And I walk into the booth and there's people everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And I thought, oh. And then I'm looking over and I'm looking at the Magna Tosh. And then I'm thinking, if they've got any base in Tart, I think I'll get it. So I definitely want it. And I saw it, and I reached by this, I said, excuse me, please, and grabbed it. Pulled it out, and it was vintage. So I got my Tosh Vintage in Tart. And the lady, one of the ladies who was helping her, she said, I've just found that at the back, and just literally pulled it out. And then she said, I've also got this. I said, no, this is all I'm getting. And it was just lovely. It smells, it totally smells of vinegar which I understand um, because of the absolute colours. You can see it's been against fibre. Well, I think that might actually be cat fur. Um, yeah. So that is my beautiful Madeline Tosh purchase. And it doesn't, there we go. Um, and again, not having to pay postage. So a lot of the stuff I was able to get and not have to pay postage, which is pretty crippling at times. Um, but wait, there's more. There was a chap there from Gawler in South Australia. I'm sure it was Gawler. Yeah, from Gawler. Um, who is a coloured sheep and wool producer. Bennett and Gregor. Wirrawarra wool. This is naturally coloured carded wool tops for spinning or felt making. Tri-coloured plait. I actually ended up getting two of these. Um, they're 100 grams each. The colours in there, I actually have the one of the natural, so I'm not even holding that up properly. So I have one of the natural, two of the fawn, and one of the chocolate, and one of the that charcoal colour there. Um, I'm actually thinking when I get around to it, when I get up to spinning these, of doing a three ply with them. Um, I'm not totally sure if that's what I'm going to do or not, but. I do like natural coloured wool. 
and it's fairly soft. I chatted with him, I said, so what sort of wool is it? And he said, oh, it's a blend between, this is the guy who was telling me about the um, Corridale and Merinos. He said, it's blended Merino and Corridale. He said, we do like the Corridale fibre and we know it's much nicer to spin sometimes than the Merino. However, it doesn't grow as quickly. The Merino grows a lot quicker. So it's more economical um, to produce the Merino, which is not something I'd thought about before. So it is a Merino Corridale blend. He doesn't know how much. And yeah, he again had some huge hanks, I think three or 400 gram hanks of natural coloured wool. I have just put in for the, I meant to mention this last week, I didn't, the um, Ton of Wool project Kylie Gusset did a few years ago. Um, I didn't have any issues with it. I know some people did. I have chosen to support her next possible campaign um, because I got in early and was able to get a um, really good deal. <clears throat> Pardon me, on Coloured Cormo. I'll link it in the show notes because it may be something you're interested in. Uh, as I say, I didn't have any problems last time. I know some people did. They had issues with the speed and I know Kylie has addressed some of those. So it's totally up to you um, what you're going to do. And I'm just letting you know that it's there. And I'm, I think what I'm trying to say is I'm not trying to encourage or discourage. I'm trying to be fairly neutral on it. I've chosen to support it. I've spoken to lots of people who've chosen not to support it. Um, I think the premise behind it, buying a ton of wool from Cormo sheep in Tasmania that are treated nicely, um, they don't, they aren't mules or anything. Um, a lot of sheep still in Victoria, where I was driving past them yesterday, they're all mules at the sheep show, all mules. My grandfather was a farmer and I remember him, I remember as an eight-year-old him telling me, but I asked him why he did it and I thought it was so cruel, him telling me that it's so much nicer than seeing a sheep with its fly blown and the climate in some parts of Victoria and up into New South Wales, the climate is there for fly, blow, for fly blown sheep um, and that's not a pretty sight. I know my grandfather when he mules, he always did it with a knife, a very sharp knife. Um, he didn't like the idea of putting rubber bands around little lamb's tails. I, I have mixed feelings um, because here in Australia they totally mules. They cut off the tail, they cut off everything. It's not just a trimming of the fibre around the sheep's bottom. It's everything. Yeah, I eat meat. I eat lamb. I know some, somewhere you've got to draw the line. Um, but still, anyway. This Cormo is from Tasmania. It has been scoured in Australia. The second one wasn't spun here. It's been spun in New Zealand and labelled over there as well and is going to come back ready. Kylie has an organisation arranged to send it out. So there's that ton of wool project. I then went to Wools and Yards. That was my final stop. This, this, is, this is just in the fibre section. And I went to Bulls and Yarns, and they had $5 braids of merino, all in single colours. And I looked at it and I thought, I spun some merino last week and I didn't like it that much. I would prefer to have multicoloured yarns to spin, so therefore I didn't get it. But it was one of those things that sort of lured you into their booth. Then a bit further down, I was able to get some oatmeal BFL which I will dye for myself. I was able to get some of their sock blend. It's about 100 grams. Um, and this is a BFL silk and Texel. Now Texel was the sheep of the festival and they're not designed, they're designed to be a meat sheep, not necessarily a wool producing sheep because it's a very short staple length. They don't grow very much, um, their fleece. So therefore it's not good, but she said it's really good for blending in and it adds some strength to things. Um, it's just a reddy, blacky type colour there. And that's just for me to try. It won't become socks because I'm definitely not going to get a sock. Um, 100 grams, I'm not going to get socks worth out of it. By this stage, I'd run out of money, so I wasn't able to get any more. And then she had some natural Wednesday dough, which I thought I'd like to try. So I said, it almost looks like cheese. I don't think I'm going to dye it cheese colours. There's no need to worry about that. Um, Chagoo needles, I think I mentioned, I 
I'll be using the soft ones at the moment. I also got some five millimeter needles because I have problems with my five mils. I my wooden ones have split and I keep meaning to send them back. Um, and then on my metal ones I lost when I lost my project. So on to the wooden stuff. From knitting from spinning woody, woody yeah, spinning woody I think he is. Wraps per inch tool. And he did give me a chart for it as well, which I will put somewhere. I know I can use all of it. This is just really beautiful timber. I can't actually remember what this is. I think it might be rosewood from memory. So there's that. And I just adore hue and pine. I wanted a nitty noddy. He had a hue and pine nitty, nitty noddy there. So I got this one. Hue and pine is from Tasmania. It is the most gorgeous pale colour. Um, and this is just really, really lovely. I then got a yarny. That's on the ball bearings. This is again Tasmanian um, timbers. It is blackwood, rosewood, and hewan. This is called Ewan because I like Ewan. You know I like Ewan. And so this is Ewan the Hewan. And yeah. I'm not going to go there. I'll let you go there yourself if you cho so choose to. But this is my yarny that I got. So really, really pleased with it. He's done an amazing job. Um, and I can't actually see. It's all enclosed in there. So I know it's on bearings and things like that. But yeah, just lovely. Um, so yeah, I look forward to using that. Then there's the wheel. So I went down and saw M Emma at Spun Out and we discussed things and I said, hi, I'm Fiona and she goes, oh! and she was showing people all her spindles. She had the most amazing range of spindles and I could have easily gone mad there and bought a number of spindles because, wow, just, just so beautiful. Um, and she said, oh, it's in the car, I'll go and get it. So she went and grabbed it and we went over to a corner and she said, do you want to pull it out and have a try? And I said, no, not really. She goes, oh, good, I don't really want people seeing it because they'll all want one. And I said, I understand. So I got my wheel. She threw in some fibre, which I have been spinning. Here's the rest of it here. It's probably about one and a half ounces left there. Um, this is, again, some Polworth in the crumble colourway. And it is spinning up really beautifully. You want to see it? You want to see my baby? Okay. So, let me go around. Whoops. There we go. Look, it's my baby. So, yes, I got a shacked sidekick and a bag for it to live in. So, here she is. It doesn't actually have a name yet. Um, that is what I've been spinning. That's some of the crumble. Probably hard to see at the moment. Whoops. Especially with the bobbin flying around. Um, that is the third of what I was spinning from the second thing. That's the first one I spun on Saturday night. Um, which I'm really, really, really pleased with. Considering there may have been alcohol involved in the spinning of it. Um, yeah. I know after trying it, I think I've made the right choice for me for the moment, for now. I could have ordered something else. I did try a couple of magic crafts whilst I was there, one of which I, it's designed more for art yarn, but it's the small one. I think it's the Aura, and it wasn't right for me. I, I had trouble with it, um, and that was my first dual pedal that I'd done. This was on the Friday at the Muster. I'm thinking, oh gosh, I hope I've done the right thing in this dual pedal wheel. But this is just amazing. Um, just really, 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 really pleased. And it came with this bag from the bag lady. And apparently she's no longer producing bags. I carried it on as carry-on on the plane. And I knew this was going to happen. I get to security at Melbourne Airport and it goes through the scanner. And the screen starts flashing. I didn't realise that's what they do. 
the guys there don't actually have to look themselves. The screen does, the machine does all the looking and then we'll flash. Um, and they sort of look over. And the guy says, is this yours? And I said, yes. He goes, is that a pram? I said, no, it's a spinning wheel. And he goes, hmm. And then he calls over a supervisor and says, and they're chatting going, mm -hmm. and I said, it's a spinning wheel. I don't think there's any scissors in there, are there? And it's amazing to see the insides of it through the scanner, the x-ray machine. And he goes, no, that's fine. And they let you go. And of course, getting on and off in the end, three planes, I've got stiff shoulders today from having to have it on the right spot so that I can get down the aisles. But still, it is what it is. And I got it home. I need to get some more bobbins for it. I'm going to look at getting some... Have I just... I've just noticed. Yeah, I've got my... I don't think that really matters. It's there. It's okay. I had just had the... Um, bobbin... It's not a brake belt, whatever it's called. Tensioner. It's just twisted. I might just undo that. But I don't think it actually matters that much. Um... I need to get some more bobbins. I don't know. I might wait and just get a woolly winder. Um, I'm I'm in a couple of minds because I know I would like a bulky plier um, for plying. But if I did that, I might as well just look at a woolly winder. But then, do I want a bulky woolly winder or do I want a regular woolly winder? It's all very confusing. Um, I just want to spin. And I'm really loving spinning. I've loved the Tour de Fleece. I didn't get to spin on Thursday. Friday, I did a bit of practice spinning. On, I didn't take any photos or anything. Um, and I'm looking at including fibre in my daily diet. I want to make sure I spin fairly regularly um, just to keep on improving. And I think probably to just um, keep practicing and make sure I, I spin a few times a week. Um, I was having a chat with Jasper last night because he hasn't been doing any flute practice for his flute and he loves it. And I said, well, part of it is just doing it for the enjoyment and we've decided he's not going to do an exam, sit an exam this year for his flute, which he seems okay with, but I'm not sure. And I said, when you get into it, I said, I don't feel like I'm practicing with my spinning because I'm enjoying it. And one of the things you've got to realise in life is you're always going to be a lifelong learner. You're always going to be learning new things. I'm never going to be an expert expert. There's always going to be things that I can pick up and things that other people will know that they can share with me and things I can share with other people. I think that's probably one of the reasons I do this podcast is because it creates discussion and discourse, not only in our group, um, which is a down of the on Ravelry if you're wanting to have a look, um, but people who get in touch with me, um, people who share things and, and say, I really like the way you showed that, I do it that way. And I, a couple of times I've been able to communicate with people and, and go back and forth and we've been able to come up with amazing new things, new way of doing things. And sometimes I bring them back to the podcast and sometimes I forget. Um, I think that's about it. I am still really tired, even after quite a bit of sleep last night. It's probably going to take a few nights to catch up on sleep. But... An absolutely amazing weekend and really looking forward to probably going next year and hopefully the shop will be all up and running and I might even be able to do some vending. Um, thank you to everyone I met who introduced themselves, who I'm, I'm not going to start with names because I'm hopeless with names. Um, I'm great with avatars, avatars, etc. Um, people I didn't get to meet, I'm on the plane yesterday and I'm thinking, so-and-so is there and I meant to meet up with her and I forgot. Just totally forgot. But, again, a really, really amazing time. Really looking forward to doing it next time. I've discovered there are a couple of knitting retreats down south um, that I might look at at some stage as well because, yeah, um, pretty, pretty amazing time was had by all. Um, I think that's that's almost it. I've got to get my Camp Loopy finished this week. Imi is now home Wednesday morning, so I get to go up. I'm, I'm actually a bit pleased I didn't have to get up at 4 o'clock this morning to go to the airport because I know I would have been absolutely exhausted. 
and I didn't take many photos at Bendigo. I, I think I was just too overwhelmed. Didn't get any video taken there. That can happen another time too. So until next time, I will say uru, cheers, bye.